In chapter 12, we're going to talk about standard multiple regression. Talking about statistics, we have already discussed a little bit about regression analysis. And it is a statistical process for estimating the relationships among variables. And we've kind of gone over that in the last chapter. It includes many techniques for modeling and analyzing several variables, which whenever you have um, the focus is between a relationship of a dependent and one or more independent variables. And so remember, we talked about that dependent variable, meaning it, it depends on the other two variables. So it's pretty stable but it is, does depend on the other variables. So just, uh, you know, using examples from the last chapter, we had made the, um, the one analogy of individuals um, completing that particular survey and if they had a positive experience within the hospital, they tended to be happier. So um, that would be a dependent and independent variable relying on each other. So they could, what uh, researchers try and do is make that relationship, okay? And they can make predictions, and that's what they like to do with um, regression analysis. More specifically, regression analysis helps one understand how the typical value of the dependent variable or the criterion variable changes when any one of the independent variables is changed or is varied, while the other independent variable may be held fixed. Most commonly, regression analysis estimates the conditional expectation of the dependent variable given the independent variables. That is, it's an average, okay, it's an average value of the dependent variable when the independent variables are fixed. So all we're looking at with regression analysis, I mean, I don't mean to simplify it, but basically we're making um, some predictions based on information that we already have with a dependent variable and independent variables that have a direct effect on the dependent variable. And just to elaborate a little bit more on regression analysis, it's widely used for predicting and forecasting. That's what um, I have said in the previous slide. Um, regression analysis is also used to understand which among the independent are related to the dependent variables. We've talked about that already. So it seems, it seems complicated, but it really isn't that complicated. If you were um, actually going to be running statistics, your regression analysis would help a lot as far as if you were doing a study and how you could make future changes based on the um, information that you've already gathered, trying to make that association between one variable and another variable, one depending on the other. In restricted circumstances, regression analysis can be used to infer causal relationships between the independent and the dependent. However, this can lead to illusions or false, false relationships. So ca caution is advised um, when using it to actually say that it causes something. Uh, it's not to be confused with we're, we're seeing if there is a relationship, but not uh, actually saying that one thing causes another thing. And just you know, speaking about that survey again on individuals uh, completing their hospital survey, it doesn't necessarily mean that because they had good treatment at the hospital, it caused them to be happy because there's so many other variables that could have caused those individuals to be happy. So we're seeing that there's a definite relationship or correlation or co-relationship between individuals that had positive treatment in the hospital and them being happy, but we're not saying that the positive hospital stay actually caused the individuals to be happy. So what we're saying is, um, 
you know, correlation or correlation does not imply causation, okay? We like it to um, make that relationship or make the association, but we're not going to say it causes. Standard multiple regression, um, all the independent variables are entered into the regression equation at the same time. So they're not all the independent variables that could have a direct association to the dependent variable are all entered at the same time. There is a, a big equation, and once again, you will not have to know the equation, nor if you follow up with another statistics class will you ever have to do that equation. It's simply put into a statistical um, program, and usually it's FPSS. Multiple regression and um, regression squared measure the strength of the relationship between the set of independent variables and the dependent variable. Okay, A frequency test is used to determine if the relationship can be generalized to the population represented by the sample. Okay, and there's another thing in SPSS, and I know with this whole semester we didn't get into SPSS at all, um, and I think that that's probably going to be for another statistics class, especially if you decide to continue on for a master's, it'll be an actual statistics class where you are going to have to put your information into SPSS based on your um, data sets. Um, the frequency test is used to determine if the relationship can be generalized to that particular population represented by the sample that you already have. So if we're talking about a group of nurses and you did a study um, on a group of nurses and um, hand washing techniques based on that particular group of nurses and the information that you received and what you put in as far as multiple regression goes, the frequency test, you could use that result to possibly obtain better sterilization or better hand washing techniques for another group of nurses because it's the variables would all be the same and you would be able to, to not um, obviously say that it caused something, but you could say that there is a relationship between nurses and possibly um, poor hand washing techniques. So that might be something that you would be able to implement, say, a, a continuing education on reviewing um, proper hand washing techniques. Okay, so based on one set of nurses, you could implement, based on those results, you could implement the um, same protocol for another group of nurses. A t-test is used, we talked about t-tests already, the student t-test, to evaluate the individual relationship between each independent variable and the dependent variable. I think we've, I think, uh, we've kind of drilled that into your, your head. I think you have a pretty good understanding of that. And just continuing on. Um, again, the standard multiple regression is an extension of linear regression analysis, which we spoke about last chapter. It allows us to determine the strength of the association between the number of variables, also called the explanatory or predictor variables, and the dependent variable called the criterion variable. Um, an ANOVA table can show us whether we're looking for statistical significance. Remember we learned about ANOVA being um, a test of statistical significance. And once again, if, if we're seeing statistical significance, we're going to say there's a prediction that we can make about the same variables in another group or another I don't want to say group of people, but what we're actually studying. If the variables are the same, we can make the prediction that it's going to be the same in the other group as well. Standard multiple regression also allows us to look at the unique contribution of each separate explanatory variable on the criterion variable, which is the coefficient table, which is um, something that's a little bit 
more in depth than what we need to get into. But what we can look at when we have, when we do a standard multiple regression, it allows us to look at how each variable associated with the dependent variable, how each independent variable associated with the dependent variable contributes to the overall um, end result or the overall um, prediction that we're going to make. In hypothesis testing and multiple regression, generally the researchers do not formulate a formal hypothesis. And it's more of, uh, such as the slide says, an exploratory type of research. And the reason being is that when we form a hypothesis, the hypothesis is pretty specific. And it's usually one, maybe two independent variables and that dependent variable. So with multiple regression, remember we're looking at a lot of variables that could cause um, the end result of the study. So talking about the um, example that I gave in a few slides back, with the nurses and hand washing, the researchers could say this study explored the association between a range of psychological variables and self-reported hand washing in a sample of nurses who worked in a large general hospital. So they're really not making a prediction such as um, a very specific psychological variable, say maybe depression. Maybe they looked at uh, a variable, the psychological variable being depression, and they looked at self-reporting hand washing. Okay, so those are two very specific uh, independent dependent variables. But if you if you look at this, they're really not giving you a specific psychological variable. So it could be you know, depression, anxiety, there could be a lot of different variables that they're actually studying, okay? So they don't make that that real um, specific hypothesis. With uh, the hypothesis, when you move on to directed research, you will have to come up with a hypothesis. And students generally will come up with all these different things that they want to study, and I make them draw it all in to basically two maybe three variables. For example, uh, a hypothesis um, one of the students is doing this semester is that 4D imaging for mammograms is more, um, can detect lesions, cancerous lesions earlier than a 3D mammography imaging. Very specific, going to look at um, individuals who have had a 3D and a 4D mammography and see um, if these individuals, if the 4D is more efficient at detecting um, cancerous lesions at, a, at an earlier stage. Now when she first started her project, she was going to say that 4D was more um, efficient at detecting cancerous lesions earlier and this reducing the number of follow-up calls to, to patients to come back for another mammogram, which was good. It sounds like a really nice idea, but it's just too many variables thrown in there. So um, when you do an actual hypothesis, it's going to be very, very specific prediction. Here, using multiple regression, standard multiple regression, there's just too many variables. And remember, we put all these variables in. We put them all in at the same time. Nothing weighs more than another variable. Because if I'm looking at uh, the nurses and I'm looking at psychological variables, I'm going to use nothing weighs more out of psychological variables. It's going to be anxiety, um, depression, mild, moderate depression, bipolar disorder. They're all going to weigh the same in when they're put into FPSS as far as 
does something have more of an effect than something else? We're not going to say that it does. In the end result, we'll see if it has more of an effect, but going into um, actually looking at that information and that data, it always the same going into um, our program. Although they obviously expected their explanatory to relate to hand washing, they did not specify which of the variables would be more important. That's pretty much what we just talked about. So just continuing on a little bit more with um, your hypothesis testing and multiple regression. As they did not state a formal hypothesis, the researchers cannot either confirm or reject a hypothesis. So that's something else to make sure that you have a, a good understanding of that, especially for our final. Um, the results are important, though. They will tell us that certain variables are able to predict nurses' hand washing behavior quite well. And thus, hospitals can change procedures so that nurses are more likely to wash their hands, thus reducing potential for transmission of infections. So, um, once again, we're going to be looking at so many things that can go into determining whether or not um, we can take the information from this particular study and this particular data set and apply it to the same group or the same setting and be able to, once again, in this situation, possibly come up with a continuing education as far as um, reiterating the importance of uh, hand washing for nurses. Okay, so what, what we're ultimately looking at here is, once again, we've got results from one study, and from that study, we're going to make a prediction based on that information, okay, and then we can apply that to the same situation in order to make changes. Okay, so that's kind of the basis of standard multiple regression. There isn't a ton of information because it is just an extenuation of what we talked about in the previous, um, the previous chapter.